35 millimeter, 50 millimeter, 24 to 105, 70 to 200. What the heck do all these numbers mean? Well, today I'm going to show you the difference between a 35 millimeter and a 50 millimeter and why I bring both to every single session that I do on the beach. Stay tuned. Aloha everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Maria from Maria Thill Photography and I'm a professional photographer and videographer based in Maui, Hawaii. For the best advice on how to grow your photography business, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified every single week when I post a new video. If you're watching this video, chances are you're just getting into the world of photography and you need a little help understanding which lens is gonna best fit your needs. So today I'm gonna go over the 35 millimeter and the 50 millimeter lens and show you the difference between the two so that you can decide which lens is gonna be the best one for you to start with. So let's just jump right in. So the main difference between a 35 millimeter and a 50 millimeter lens is that a 35 millimeter is gonna give you a wider field of view. Whereas a 50 brings it in just a little bit tighter. 35 millimeters are great for scenic, Type landscape photography, um, any type of photography where you're in a small tight space so like I always bring a 35 millimeter to any type of wedding that I'm doing because you honestly never know what you're gonna get until you show up and sometimes being in those tight little hotel rooms doing the getting ready shots are really challenging so a 35 millimeter is great because I can be super close to my subjects and still capture a good range of what I'm trying to put into the photo. So now switching to the 50 millimeter, everything's gonna be a little bit tighter. So I have to be, if, if I wanna capture the same exact photo with a 35 and a 50, I have to be further back with the 50 to capture the same view that I am with a 35. So for example, I'm shooting this video right now on a 50 millimeter lens. It's about three feet away from me. So you can tell that this is more of like a portrait style lens. So a good way to understand what these numbers mean for millimeters is that the smaller the number, the wider your view is. Now, the higher the number, the more narrow your view is. If I'm in a super tight space, chances are I'm gonna bring my 16 to 35 millimeter lens because that gives me the field of view super super wide for 16 which honestly I don't really use that much because the lens distorts the edges a lot um, but I can go to a 35 with it which is amazing and then if I'm shooting something super far away like a wedding and I'm all the way at the back I'm gonna bring my 70 to 200 lens so that means that I can zoom in super far and still capture the ring exchange the bride and the groom talking to each other the facial expressions, whereas if I was shooting a ceremony like that and I'm super far back and I'm on a 35, it's gonna be more of a scenic view. That's why it's kinda of nice to have both so you offer versatility when you're delivering your photos to your clients. So I'm gonna show you some examples of photos I've shot with 35 millimeter and a 50 millimeter. So here's a 35, here's a 50. 35, 50, 35, 50. So now, the reason why my favorite lens is the 50 millimeter 1.2 is because of the low aperture of 1.2 that it offers. It's really rare that I ever go down to 1.2, but in the event that I need to, I have it. As you can see right now, there's a really nice bokeh effect going on behind me, which just means that I have a very shallow depth of field. So the focal point is on my face, but everything behind me is not in focus. Now watch this. Now my desk is in focus and I'm not. So it just shows you, it's refocus. <laughs> so it just shows you that this lens has the ability to get very creative. I love a shallow depth of field photo. This lens is perfect for that because I can go down so low. I hope you're finding this video helpful so far. If you are, leave a comment below and let me know which lens you like more based on my examples. So now let's talk about composition. For a 35 millimeter, I'm typically using it when I wanna capture people, 
with the scene behind it. So a lot of times when I'm doing my sessions, people are here to experience Maui. And when they're doing a photography session with me, they want to capture Maui and them in it. So to give a good understanding, here's a good photo that shot on a 35 millimeter. So it shows you the beautiful view of Maui and the people in it. And so you can see from this photo, I'm not really capturing a lot of like emotion. It doesn't, it tells a story, but it's not a story like this. So this is shot on a 50 millimeter. The reason why I carry both on a session is because I wanna deliver both of those photos. It is why I get raving reviews from all of my clients. It's why people book me. And it makes a session more fun because I'm creating different photos every single time. So to recap, a 35 millimeter I'm gonna use for something that's scenic with people in it. And for a 50, I'm gonna use it for something that's more portrait style or something that's detail oriented, like flowers with a ring in the middle. So let's talk about primes for a minute. A prime lens basically means that it stays at that focal length the entire time. It's not like a 70 to 200. Basically, it's gonna stay at that focal point. And the reason why I suggest buying primes always is because they're made with the best glass and you're gonna get the best photos from it. There's less room for little particles to get into your lens. And I just find that when I've reviewed some of my old photos shot from my very first lens that I bought, which was the 24 to 105 versus my 50 millimeter prime lens, there's a huge difference. One thing I want you to understand is that when you're first starting off, you don't need to buy all this fancy professional grade gear. You can start off with a 50 millimeter STM prime lens and that's Canon's introductory 50 millimeter lens. I'll put it in the description below. It's super affordable. It's like $125 versus $1,300 for a 50 millimeter 1.2. Now, by all means, upgrade to the 50 millimeter 1.2 when you're ready. But what I'm saying is when you're first starting off, it's not as important to have the professional grade lenses than it is to practice things like composition and just getting the hang of your settings to start. I started on a 50 millimeter 1.8 STM lens. I still think it's one of the best lenses to start with. And because I don't use it anymore, I've now given it to my mom because she wants to learn photography. So to help her understand the value of a prime lens, I told her, just take the lens, try it out. Let me see what you create. Which leads me to my next point. I wanna say thank you for supporting my channel. And as a little gift from me to you, I put a link down in the description to my free Lightroom preset. It's my most popular preset, the one that I use for like almost all of my photos. And I also put a free posing guide to posing couples in the description below. So I want you to take these tools and I want you to get out there and start shooting, start creating. And then I wanna see what you create. So head over to my private Facebook page, request to join, and put in there all the photos that you go out and you create with these tools. In my private Facebook group, I also share photography and business advice. And it's just a place for all of us creators to connect and come together as a community to learn from each other. So all the links are down below. Check it out. I want to see what you create. If you like this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and share with your fellow photographer friends. And comment below and let me know if you like the 35 millimeter more or the 50. I'm curious. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week. Bye.